Yo, what's up drum and bass heads? Welcome to another tutorial on this channel called How to Drum and Bass, where it is my job, amongst other things, to teach you what the top producers are doing with their sounds and how they're making them, and to teach it to you so that you can improve your drum bass production. Today we're gonna be looking at something super cool, a song that came out quite a while ago, but that's still getting rinsed in every single drum and bass dance floor set, and sometimes even the stuff that, you know, AMC plays and Andy C and some of the, you know, more sort of hybrid guys, they just rinse this song because it's absolutely baller. And the sound is super interesting to make, and it uh, employs a technique that I think is uh, enormously useful and that I'm currently using a lot in my own productions as well. And that sound is, of course, the legendary lead from Solar System, which sounds like this. Nice. And our recreation that we're gonna make today sounds like this. <laughs> As you can hear, that sounds quite a bit louder and a little bit more reverb than in the original song. Obviously, you would mix this in, but it is almost one-to-one -one the exact same sound. So before we dive in how to go and recreate this from scratch, I just want to mention that, as always, you can download the presets in the link below. If you want to take these MIDI notes just to go along, they're also included in the free download below. So let's copy them down here and let's get a fresh serum patch to start working on this recreation. So what this sound actually has is sort of a vocal property, not so much like a formant, but more like a wow type of sound. And we're gonna do some really cool filtering on a bunch of saw waves to achieve that. So we're gonna start out with two saw waves and the best ones I feel like uh, are just these, actually these analog ones, are just these basic shape ones. So you can actually just use these default ones. You could also opt to use one of these more analog versions. I really like the basic mini as well because it just sounds a little bit warmer. It's a emulation from a hardware synth which just has a little bit different phasing and stuff like that. But we're actually gonna emulate that with some noise here because these are the most harmonically rich. I still feel they sound the fattest. So we kind of want to pick these digital ones. So yeah, let's grab two of them and let's also immediately add that noise then. And it doesn't really matter which one you pick. The AC hum here is just fine. And we're gonna just put that level down here so that we get this. It's just gonna add a little bit of warmth to everything that we've got here. Okay, and so our goal here is to work with two oscillators that are both playing saw waves, but we're gonna make them differ slightly from each other. And we're gonna pan one of them slightly to the right and one of them slightly to the left. Now what this is gonna do is it's going to create the idea of stereo image in your brain. So it's gonna sound wider and it's gonna sound more realistic as long as we make these two oscillators differ from each other ever so slightly. So we're gonna start by putting up the unison all the way up to 16. And then because we want this one to be slightly different, let's put this up to eight or something. And we're gonna put them at different rates of detuning. You do not want this to be too drone so something low like this is probably fine. And then before we go and apply some effects on this, I actually already want to shape the sound a bit. And we're going to do that in two ways, which are both really interesting. So when you have this sort of wow sound, not only does the sort of filtering and the shaping go according to a shape that is sort of like this, right? A, like a round shape that makes that wow sound like it's actually someone saying wow. But also, you, if you say it yourself, you change your pitch. And so we're going to do exactly that. We're going to take uh, another LFO. So this one we're going to use for shaping in a minute. But we're also going to take an LFO that is quite steep. And we're going to put that on the coarse pitch of both of these oscillators. And what we're going to do is we're basically going to make it start at a lower pitch and then go up because it's like wow, right? You can hear it, that pitch goes kind of up. So let's change these to, uh, to unipolar rather than bipolar. And we're gonna put this somewhere in the minus range. So let's pick minus 10 for now, but you can change this value depending on how intense you want it to be. And you can already hear that this does something pretty cool. <laughs> All right, and so the next thing that we're gonna do, and I really love this trick, this is what I was talking about earlier, we're gonna grab a multi-filter. I feel like these are super underused by people because they just don't really understand how to use it, and we're gonna pick a band and a notch. And so what you might know is that if you have two peaks, so one peak here and one peak here that are moving towards each other, uh, you will create what is called almost like a yo sound, something that gets used in dubstep a lot. But you can use different ways of filters moving toward each other to also emulate specific type of vowels being spoken. And sort of this wow sound is actually really easily achievable with a band filter and a notch filter. That's what this stands for. B is band and N is notch. So we're gonna take this shaping LFO that we just had here, and we're gonna put that on the cutoff of this one. And I think it just needs to go something like this, but we can adjust it later. And then this second frequency knob is is a notch filter here, which I'm also going to apply, but this one I'm gonna put backwards. And when I play the sound, you'll see what this does. 
cool. So we just need to adjust that to the right ranges. So this one needs to be a little bit wider. And this one needs to be somewhere here. And the reason why we're putting it exactly here is you'll see that these two little bumps, let's put that resonance up a tiny bit as well, will basically almost touch. <laughs> but not quite. And this just emulates sort of what you do in your mouth. All right, let's get back to these oscillators for just a second. Let's also put the fine of one of them up and one of them down a little bit. Not too much, just two arbitrary different amounts. So not the same. So that means we're going to get some disparity in there. Just a little bit of off tuneness that is going to add to the sound and also add to the width because, well, when you listen to music in real life, it's never perfectly pitched, right? <laughs> Cool. Let's also start adding some distortion. So I actually want this distortion to increase over time. So we're going to put it somewhere here and we're going to, uh, well, this is the shape that we want the sound to go in. We're going to apply that to this shape and we're going to pick something a bit aggressive. So you could pick the stomp box here. I quite like that. And it's just going to get that little bit of overdrive in there. That's sort of, you know, going to make it a little bit more bright in a sense. All right. Let's also add a compressor here. Uh, really just kind of to add some gain, um, maybe, you know, maybe put the threshold down a little bit or up a little bit, actually. Let's also toss some reverb on there. We got to be careful with this because this gets intense pretty quickly. Let's leave it at something like that for now. Let's make sure to increase a little bit of this low cut though. All right, cool. Then what we want to do is we want to make it a little bit brighter because you can hear here that this, this one's quite aggressive in a way. It's got quite a lot of sort of body to it in those, uh, in those brighter frequencies. So we're going to do two things, actually. We're going to have a sweep here. So we're going to pick this one. We're going to uh, up the gain on this a little bit. And I want this to be like a bell curve kind of thing. Actually, this is too much gain. Let's do something like this. And it needs to be like a little bobble. And we're also going to use this shape here to let that frequency go over time from the lowest frequencies to somewhere in the mid. Nice. And then secondly, we're going to pick this shelving and this is going to be to taste. We're, we're going to leave this here for now for a second. Um, but this will just basically give us an opportunity to increase the, um, yeah, the body of the top end of this sound. All right, let's also add a little bit of a delay tail to it uh, because this sound is something that, you know, it sounds like it really reverberates in a room. So we already got that pretty big reverb here, but let's also add some delay. And one cool thing to do also, again, to sort of, you know, change between the left and the right channels is to change the uh, delay on both channels to something different. And we're going to filter this actually, because I only really want these mid frequencies. That's going to sound the best. <laughs> Let's also go back into this LFO and just see what is the best slope for this, um, this coarse pitch to change. <laughs> so maybe a little bit steeper than that. <laughs> nice. And of course, uh, not to forget, we also want this filtering to apply to B. That's going to substantially improve what we're working with here. Hey, what's up, guys? Just want to take one minute of your time to ask you if you are looking to start learning about drum bass production, or maybe you've already started and you just feel like you need a lot more of the fundamentals and you want to understand it really much more thoroughly and start to finish. We have just done a soft launch for our newest product. It's a membership called the School of Drum and Bass, and it has more than 200 videos that go from all the way in the beginning on how to produce music and how to use Ableton and all those kinds of things, all the way to producing a professional drum and bass track, mixing, and pretty much everything that needs to be covered for a beginner and an intermediate producer. If you feel like that might be interesting for you, there's a super special offer right now. You can get your first week for just one British pound. That is like $1.50 if you live in the US or like one euro 15. So if you're ready to level up your drum bass production, go check it out in the link below. All right, let's move on with the video. Nice. Okay. And so now you can kind of hear that what we want to do is because yeah, this filters out quite a bit of that top end, as you can see, <laughs> see all that blue stuff is going to get out. So we want to kind of put that back in there so that we do keep the shaping, but that we just have a little bit back of whatever's left. <laughs> Might be a bit intense, but once again, you can sort of flavor this to taste. And then so last but not least, you would kind of want to do some EQing maybe to find the right points here. And I just want to show you something really uh, quickly that I like to do. So there's also Serum Effects. 
And uh, when you have to add like a multi-filter or something that's a little bit complicated that, you know, would be nice to sort of view what's going on here. Because uh, basically what I want to do, rather than EQing some extra points in uh, the post-production here, I just want to keep it all in this serum patch. But it's kind of hard to, you know, do that visually uh, if I have just this filter. Because what I want to do is I actually want to create two peaks. I know two frequencies that I want to accentuate to make it sound a little bit more sort of alive. And I can pick a peak peak here, PP12, which is basically literally just going to introduce two sort of bell curves kind of. But here, it's hard to see what I'm doing, you know, unless I know the specific frequencies that I want to be at. This is, at least for me, you know, I like things to be visual. But what you can do is you can sort of demo that in a serum effects here on this particular filter. All you have to do is press note latch and put the noise in. That'll basically just feed whatever's coming out of this serum into this serum effects. And then we're going to pick this PP here and we're going to sort of adjust it here until we've got what we need. And then we're going to put it back into, well, we're going to just copy the settings basically. So a little trick to make things a bit more visual. So let's grab this PP. And basically what I want is I want the cutoff of this to be somewhere here. Let's put the resonance up so you can see what's happening as well. It's creating a little bump here. And I want another bump sort of like there. <laughs> So that is better than this, right? This still sounds a little bit dull. Super nice. All right. And so now I've sort of seen what I wanted to do, right? This is a lot more visual. Is If I move these points as well, I can kind of see what happens. And now we can just go and actually look at these settings that we've created visually now. We can, we can go back into this original serum patch and just put it in here. So we had one cutoff somewhere here. We had the resonance up a little bit like that. And we had this frequency of the second peak somewhere like that, right? <laughs> of course, we gotta, we gotta take the serum effects off now. <laughs> nice. So yeah, that is basically how you make something like that. And if we compare it to the original, let's see how we go. I would say that that is pretty close. Now, I think the main lesson that you want to take away from this is these two techniques here, which is this coarse pitch modulation and this filtering that's just going to make for some really cool vowel property like shaping to the sound. So, I challenge you to do something super creative with that today. Go make a cool sound and make a four bar loop with it and get your drum bass production on guys. All right, that was the video. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider helping me out if I helped you out by leaving a comment and a like under here. I know it's kind of silly to ask for it, but it really helps the algorithm push this out to more people like you who want to learn about drum and bass and it helps me make a living. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.